The Giant TCR Advanced SL0 is a true superbike. Giant Bikes is probably the world's biggest manufacturer of bicycles. They make carbon frames for all the brands we're familiar with from the World Tour, all in the Far East at their giant factories in China and Taiwan. The TCR itself is like a royal family in high-end World Tour bike racing frames. It was originally developed in 1997 by Mike Burrows, and the key design feature was the fact that it had a compact frame. It's still reflected today when we see the top tube being sloped and having a small rear triangle. That increases rigidity, reduces weight, and also means the frames are more versatile and can be adapted to a wider range of sizes. The TCR itself has been a micro advance in the whole range this year. Everything has been made slightly better. It's slightly lighter, slightly more aerodynamic, slightly more rigid. One of the key features that's achieved that has been a rethink of the whole tube shaping across the frame. While it may look really similar to the old designs, everything has changed a little bit. Specifically, this truncated ellipse tube shape here. This means we've got a really wide shape on the down tube, which also has a sort of cam tail effect to shield the water bottles from aerodynamic drag, but also increased rigidity. That's why we see a really wide bottom bracket section that's also very, very stiff. It might look quite similar to the last generation of the bike, but luckily, as it happens, we have an old one to compare it to. This is the old generation TCR Advanced. Now, this is a bike I actually bought as a demo bike after a test run, and currently now is mainly used by my wife, hence why the saddle height's a tiny bit lower. But in its time, this is an exceptionally good race bike as well. But it's funny to see, while it looks really similar from a glance, there are lots of really subtle differences. Mainly and overwhelmingly is the transition from rim brakes to disc brakes. As you can see, Giant has done a really good job of integrating discs into the whole build, and pretty much offers discs as standard across the range. While rim brakes were, really effective in their own right for many users, we couldn't see the kind of versatility into the tyre clearance that we see on the new Giant TCR, which can take up to 32mm tyres. Now having a closer look, you can see some quite significant, but initially very hard to detect differences. Now if you look at the front end, for instance, the level of integration is a lot lower on the older generation TCR. What you essentially have is quite a nice carbon stem, but no specifically shaped spaces to match that and to increase the aerodynamic efficiency. Similarly, we've got a lot of exposed front cabling because we didn't have the wireless SRAM technology that we had today. Now, in terms of tube shaping, if we have a look at this seat post right here, you'll see that we have an aerofoil shape, which is a bit more like the wing of a plane. But generally speaking, nowadays, we're taking the approach that this shape is less efficient in terms of wider yaw angles than the likes of the new TCR and its more truncated, flatter aerodynamic tube shapes. Beyond that, of course, we have the integrated seat post on the new one. That is a bit of a loss of practicality, but lower down the range of the giant TCR, we do have removable seat posts, much like the one we see here. Now, similarly further back, the BB is slightly thinner on this version, and also we have a little less tire clearance at the rear. Everything's just a little bit tighter. Now, below the skin, something we can't see is that the new giant TCR uses a lot more different carbon pieces. This apparently has increased 150 more carbon swatches, which are basically small carbon pieces that are put together during the production process. What that means is that you can program in the, the ride performance and the stiffness in a much more specific way and equally cuts down weight while increasing rigidity, or at the very least, that's what Giant claims. So while the silhouette may be similar between these two bikes, we can see that there's been a constant evolution across every single component. The TCR is in a really interesting place in terms of the endurance road racing bike, and it has really stiff competition for the top spot. This is up against the likes of the Cannondale Super 6, the S-Works Tarmac, and the Trek Amonda. Now, while Giant hasn't done any individual single engineering trait that makes it exceptional, it claims to have effectively beaten all the competition in marginal gains type ways. It boasts 10% increase in stiffness over the S-Works Tarmac, which itself boasts a 10% increase in stiffness over the Cervelo R5. It's 0.5 watts faster than the next fastest endurance road bike. That is, to make an exception, before the last Trek Amonda was released a few weeks ago. And as a result, we suspect the new Amonda is most likely quicker than this in the wind tunnel. In terms of weight, it is not quite the lightest on the market, but it is still lighter than the lights of the S-Works Tarmac and the Cannondale Super 6. Part of that is going to be down to the fact that we've got an integrated seat post, which is going to reduce the overall frame set weight. But the whole thing comes in at 1,266 grams for the fork, the frame, and the seat post, which is daringly light. Now, beyond the initial aesthetics of the bike, what we have some impressive smaller features, and one thing that's really super refreshing to see is a lot of tyre clearance. If you have a look in here at the rear end of the chain stays and the seat stays, we've got ample space for wider tyres, and this bike should be able to accept 32 millimetre tyres on the right rim. Looking at it now, that's no surprise to me, and I wouldn't be surprised if you could fit even larger. With 25 millimetres on there now, we have easily a centimetre of give on either side. Beyond that, we've got um, an interesting spec. 
All of Giant's top end bikes now, the very top of the TCR range, has tram axis group sets, which means that we don't see any external cabling. And that's been a big advantage at the front end because it means that we have less noise here and less aerodynamic drag. But similarly, an interesting feature on the TCR versus the likes of a Mondra is that we still have exposed cables out front here. But Giant argues that most of their consumers want to travel with their bikes and having these cables internal through complicated routing that is really difficult to take apart is a big hindrance for a lot of those consumers. So while we have two cables exposed, there's a big advantage in practicality, but a slight disadvantage in performance. That said, I personally applaud the fact they've gone for a wireless as default setup because it's so much simpler to not have to worry about this internal cable routing for the gears as well. Now, in terms of the spec, what we see in the rear is a SRAM Axis 12-speed group set with a 10 to 28 rear cassette and a 48 to 35 front chain ring. That offers a lot of range at either end, but also really tight steps between each gear. A slightly disappointing side of the spec is that this has a press fit bottom bracket, which has got increasing flack over the years in terms of durability. This bike, during my time testing with it, is absolutely fine. There are no signs of creaking, but across the market, we're seeing an increasing return to threaded BBs. While the frame has had incremental gains that are really impressive, for me, the most interesting overall step forward for this bike has been the update in the Kadex wheel set. These are the Kadex 42 disc wheels. Now, while these may look like any normal carbon rims and carbon wheel set, what's really impressive here is we actually have carbon spokes as well, carbon bladed spokes too. So that is an aerodynamic advantage, but a huge step up in stiffness and durability as carbon doesn't tend to lose any, any stiffness from fatigue life that you might see from aluminium or steel. These wheels were what were used by the CCC team before COVID halted racing temporarily. And unlike previous generations, the pro team fully considered this to be a world tour level wheel where Giant's previous SLR tended to be spec'd, but the teams opted for usually a different provider such as Zip or similar. The rest of the finishing kit is all done by Giant themselves. This is a brand new Giant Fleet saddle, which is similar in nature to the S-Works Power Saddle we saw from a few years ago. It has a short nose and a large cutout, reflecting the fact that people like to sit in a more aggressive position these days on the saddle. At the front end, we've got a contact bar and stem and a really nice integration of these spaces here, which is subtle but makes a big difference in aerodynamic terms. And it's a small nod to practicality. We've got a really nice integrated Garmin mount right here. In terms of the riding experience of the TCR Advanced SL0, this is ultimately a very top-end, world-leading frame, but it has difficult competition. It's very much up there with the likes of the S-Works Tarmac in terms of its performance and its handling, and I'd say it's every bit as good as the likes of the newest Super 6. What I noticed out on the road, it was really responsive, super rigid, but also carried speed super well. One moment you feel like you're racing on an aero road bike, another moment you feel like you're on a really lightweight, endurance-focused, comfort-focused frame. Similarly, at the moment we have a tubeless 25mm uh, tyre setup, which I was a big fan of, but I think a lot of consumers will opt for a 28mm for a tiny bit more comfort. On the whole, though, I really applaud the fact that Giant has gone for a tubeless-only setup across most of its high-end bikes. We're seeing this tubeless technology increasingly prevalent across the high-end world of road cycling, and there are huge advantages in terms of rolling resistance and puncture resistance. So, what's our verdict on this bike? I have to say, I've not ridden a bike that stands out as being substantially better than this. But at the same time, we've got some really impressive bikes coming out on the horizon. The Trek Amonda came out a few weeks ago. I suspect we'll be seeing a new S-Works Tarmac in the next few months. So the real question for the TCR is whether it's going to really hold its head above the newest batch of super bikes and really impressive races. At the same time, for now, I can't imagine anyone being disappointed with the performance of this bike. Yes, maybe it could be a little bit more comfortable at the rear end with 25s. Maybe it could have a bit more aero integration, but those sacrifices are so small compared with the overall advantages that you get from this bike. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more of our videos, please subscribe to us or visit us at cyclist.co.uk or follow us on Instagram or Facebook.